What you're looking at right here, folks, might just be the weirdest KVK in Rise of Kingdoms history. So in this video, sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms, we're going to be evaluating the KVK in which 1960 and 2489, two of the strongest kingdoms in the game, got put into the same war camp because 1093 is actually that big. Now, this is an Alliance Invictus KVK. This is a newish format to the game and it is an imbalanced map in other words the way the zones open is super different from the way that it works in any other kvk we've seen where you've basically got kind of like a 1v1 one war camp versus one war camp up in the top a 2v2 in the bottom and that all determines who goes into kingsland which makes me think that Maybe this map setup is designed for situations like this, where there are these huge overdog kingdoms and they slug it out up top and then everybody else fights in the bottom and then emerges to sort of maybe make it into Kingsland or not. And the crazy thing is that this is a pretty star studded roster. Like, look, I'm going to miss a few kingdoms assuredly, but 1846 is in here. 1188 is in here. There are some serious kingdoms in here, and there are a lot of kingdoms in here, by the way. The other thing that this does is that it really separates the smaller fries from the alpha predators. The alpha predators slug it out up top, and <laughs> these kingdoms that would never, ever, under any circumstance, ever want to be in a map with 1093, 1960, or 2489, at least they have some KVK before they end up in King's Land with them, maybe. Okay, so like, let's talk about the balance of this KVK, because how in the world can you possibly balance a KVK in which you put 1960 and 2489 into the same war camp? They have 4.846 trillion kill points. Okay, a kingdom typically will have like, in a good kingdom, an Imperium Kingdom, like a trillion kill points. It's like, wow, good for you, right? These guys, 4.846 trillion, okay? Oh, and not to mention, two alliances here, the main alliances, have a combined power of 34.8 billion power. Okay, bet. Now look, I didn't put this diagram together. Big shout out to whoever did. This is so helpful to be looking at. Now, 1093 by comparison, only has 3.37 trillion kill points. So they are like way lower on the kill points here and they have 39.4 billion power. So like who wins in the 1v1 here? In my opinion, although 1093 has the power, what happens is that 1960 and 2489 dominates the field. Because if, dude, if 1960 could kind of hold their own and hang out, for a long time against 1093 when they were fighting in Kingsland in a prior KVK, then like, yeah, uh, <laughs> they'll be really good with 2489 in their camp, right? I assume so. So this means 1093 likely will be falling back to defend forts um, until Kingsland opens, I suspect. We'll look at the map more in a bit, which brings us to the rest of the map. Now, the way they split this up is they've got the folks in red are all grouped together. So for each team, they've got one on the left and one on the right. And if we look at the, we'll say, stronger camps here, we can see that it's 49.4 billion power on the left. That is the 1188 camp. If I'm not mistaken, 1188 stays out of Imperium because they have like 80 or so Imperium quality players or something. I don't know. They must have more than that. But like they don't have any players in understanding like the 35 to, um, I don't know, there's no farms. Like they have their main accounts and there's like nothing that is high power that would qualify toward Imperium. Like the kingdom is, is I think the leanest kingdom on the face of the earth. I could be wrong. Uh, but you can see 1188, 16.8 billion power, 1.7 trillion, trillion kill points. That's huge. And actually, there's another kingdom in here. 11.7 billion power. DQ 39, 2139, AO. 633 billion kill points. Okay, okay. On the other side, 1846 at 
billion power and 1.3 trillion kill points. 1818, I should have mentioned them as another one of these like kingdoms that's like, hey, wait, hold up. 15.2 billion power and 1.2 trillion kill points? Heck yeah, man. Dude, so between these two war camps, they're actually kind of balanced on power and, and kill points. Not perfectly, but like, how close are you gonna get in a KVK matchmaking, right? And then down here, same story. Like, they're kind of balanced here. And I would say there's no standout kingdom, really. R28 at 11.6 billion power with 310 billion kill points is the highest among the ones that are down here. So it's almost like this KVK format was designed for this situation where there's some overdog kingdoms. We need a way for them to have at it separately and everybody else can have a reasonable KVK experience up to that point, I think, right? So overall, this brings us, and this is just option A. It's kind of funny. This is what I think the final allies are. It's 138.8 uh, billion power for team 1093 and 7.3 trillion kill points versus 134.8 billion power. So less power at 9 trillion kill points for the 1960-2489 war camp. So obviously a huge kill point advantage here, which should represent the ability of team two, that's team 1960, to be dominant in the field. But to actually understand this thing, we really need to go look at the flow of the zones and try to unpack this. Okay, this is the map that we're working with and I've circled the different allies here. So white is team 1093, red is team 1960. And one of these zones looks like it's actually going to be free at the start. So first thing presumably is that pass four opens and this zone will be free for both sides. This zone will be free for both sides. And then there will be a conflict, which I think is actually kind of awesome between the smallest kingdoms that are in this KVK. So they can slug it out for this zone. Who's gonna win? Couldn't tell you, right? From here, it looks like you get entry into a zone for free, which is kind of nice. So the first place that you enter is San Pedro for 1093. Um, their allies will go into Pella, and then their allies go into this zone here. We can map out the remaining zones here that are all just free. So after the first sort of fights, you've got Altars of Darkness that are going to open up. That's these sixes, okay, that are kind of around the corners here. I'll, I'll remove that in a second, but you can see where those are. So... Then you've got past sevens opening. So here's where the main showdown happens. And what's going to happen, in my opinion, is you're gonna have field dominance from 1960-2489. But I'm pretty sure that as long as 1093 can get their forts up over here, and like the way this map is drawn, these level eight passes look shockingly close together. But I think that like 1093 has years of practice holding up fort walls. I think they will make it into King's Land, okay? Under the assumption they make it into King's Land, this is an interesting King's Land fight because of what happens over here, okay? So when these passes open, where do people go? Well, you're gonna have people that are attackable on both sides. So there may be like a little bit of a pinch, but these guys are gonna surge in through these passes, right? They're going to come in over here. They're going to claim this level eight pass. And this is going to be all about who can squeeze out the smaller kingdoms. Because remember, the smaller kingdoms are in the bottom. So in red here, these guys are going to enter the zone. They're definitely going to get that level eight pass. And if they fort wall, there's no way that either side is losing that level eight pass. So I almost feel like it's a guarantee that the four strongest war camps are definitely going to get into King's Land here. And if the smaller war camps are coached well, they too maybe make it into King's Land, depending on how close those level eights actually are, because the weaker kingdom is gonna enter through here, right? And so if everybody holds out, you've got a really cool King's Land brawl. Honestly, depending on how close those level eight passes are and how reasonable it is to put up a fort wall and make it into King's Land, 
kind of a cool situation. I actually think, although my original sort of reaction to this KVK was like, man, I don't know. It does seem kind of cool, actually. Like, this looks like it could be a very fun KVK. And although my understanding is that this KVK started with the reaction being like, uh, people in, in the Earth War Camp are like, we're sorry, this, this isn't fair to you. <laughs> this isn't fair. I do think that at least there's a lot of fight opportunity before Kingsland for people to enjoy the KVK. And then like, ready or not, like you're in that zone with 1093, 2489, and with 1960. And by the way, it's still gonna hurt to be in the zone with some of the other kingdoms that we mentioned, like 1188, 1846, etc. I'm not gonna name them all, right? So I think this KVK is gonna be pretty hype. I will definitely be covering this on the channel, showcasing some of the fighting that happens, especially when those past sevens open. If I've got this map right and I understand it, this looks like an awesome KVK. Um, and then there's past nines that open. So presumably you'll be able to go and you know, whoever wins here, uh, if we take the win based off of kill points, okay, that means that theoretically, assuming they're semi-protected and then like attack through pass nines maybe and really control the map. But at some point those pass nines open, which is kind of wild. So if you want to see all this action unfold, I'll stream it. Consider subscribing. Looks like a heck of a KVK. Kind of wish I was there actually. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. Are the K Is the KP too imbalanced? Is it, is it just so imbalanced? It doesn't make any sense. I, I, never in the history of the game have we had, I think, a, as strong a war camp as we have on Earth in this one. It's really wild. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.